Hey guys, welcome back to Twitchy Plays Kerbal Space Program, where today we are finally launching a space station. Yes, that's right, we're going to get our low carbon orbiter up in place, so that when we finally get round to doing some uh, serious tourism, we've got a series of waypoints out there, so that we can make the most efficient design of craft possible for getting from uh, surface to orbit, orbit to another planet, or uh, the moon or Minmus, and such forth like that. So we will be doing our, our build and lift today in three separate stages at the moment we are lifting the core unit uh, this is actually a little bit more interesting than what you can actually see here uh, it appears that we just have a straight up and down unit but we have used all the robotics to the finest example of what they are there for to make a folding structure Later on we'll be bringing up the habitation module to stick on the bottom of it and we'll be launching an engineer up to go around and do some uh, Kerbal attachment stuff to make the uh, station fully operational. But right now we are cruising at about 30 kilometers up and I can tell you I am really starting to feel the lack of fairings here. Those of you who stayed around until the end of last episode would have seen the entire science purchase that we did uh, and unfortunately we did not actually manage to get some of the major aerodynamic stuff mainly through oversight of my own and we have no science left to be able to um, go past and rectify that situation. But here we go, we've pushed ourselves up to an apple apsis of about 100 kilometers. I think this is where we're going to stick the uh, station. This does seems like a nice round number to always aim for. All my vessels that I like to build, I like to build in a slightly lower orbit than that, maybe 80 or 90 kilometers. So 100 is a nice clear place for me to put a structure such as this. So the first lift is almost complete. You can see we are still actually a good way off of getting our periaps up high enough to actually be in cir a nice circular orbit. But our main lifting stage has run out of fuel so it's time to do some staging and let that plummet to the surface. This is indeed what it was used for or this is what we were planning for sorry and now it's just to get a, a nice circular burn with the stage that I have left here is of course just an LV909 on the bottom of one of the standard fuel tanks or what I consider the standard one meter short fuel tank as we are aiming for the 100 kilometer circular orbit we are obviously having to wait until we are quite close to our apoapsis before we can start making our circularization burn this of course means that we after we make a small burn we have to wait a little bit longer to get a little bit closer but that's all right i'd much rather take the longer duration and the uh more accurate precision over the, the quick flight every time especially when doing a robotic flight such as this not that we have any mods in play that make it so that Kerbals need any like food or anything like that. So yeah, robotic versus Kerbal doesn't really actually matter how long they take. But with a circular orbit achieved, it's time to uh, try and have a look at our debris over here. For those of you with the memory of a goldfish, this is of course the first lifting stage of this vessel we have just lifted lifting uh, and the thing in particular I want to show you here is one of the weird things that happened so we're building up a lot of heat here and what actually happened was the adapter just uh, blew itself up between this uh, decoupler and the fuel tank and I'm like hey what's going on here got lots of noises stuff like that I'm like okay well obviously the decoupler slammed into the floor as fast as possible but if we go to the tracking station we can see on the bottom left there that we still got some debris and coming in this is still floating so if a decoupler happens to get separated from your fuel tanks and stuff, it is going to go through the atmosphere so much quicker than anything else you've got. So I'm doing the same trick that I employed a couple of episodes ago to make sure that I was in a perfectly equatorial orbit. We are taking reference from one of the vessels that were in the, co the rescue contracts because we know that is a perfectly perfectly equatorial orbit and then we're using that to find out our descending nodes and such so that we can make our appropriate maneuvers at the appropriate place as you can see this time we're just using the LV909s to make a small burn in the right place and get us down to well hopefully I'm going for a zero zero inclination but you know we'll, we'll do our best at what we can and as we're totally happy with the orbit that we happen to be in, it's time to get rid of the manoeuvring uh, rocket down on the bottom there, away from our, our station so that we can start constructing this and putting it in the right place. First step, as always, is point towards north, mainly because this is the only direction that stays constant throughout the entire solar system as it goes. You know, we, we all take reference from either the sun in the middle, especially as all the planets rotate in kind of the same way. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, north is up and up will stay carrying on being up for like at wherever you are. So I'm mucking around with the robotics here, trying to make sure these little uh, pylons on the outside stay perfectly vertical, and I think I've nailed it. This this looks here like a perfect station core, ready to have more things attached to it. So let's go do that. I think we're going to do the engineering section next because, well, we want to strengthen up all these supports and stuff like that, right? 
As we wait for the Celestial Ballet to bring everything into alignment, it's time for me to explain the many purposes to this flight. The first one is to test the actual rocket itself. This is the rocket we're going to use if we want to bring any single Taurus up here. Uh, it might be a little bit bulky, but unfortunately without any of the space plane capabilities, this is kind of what we're stuck with. It is a relatively cheap um, sub-assembly underneath it. I can't remember exactly how much it came to, but it was well, uh, only into the tens of thousands, not, not anywhere near hundreds of thousands. Another function we're testing is fulfilled by putting Bill, Bill Kerman, a man who's not known for his piloting skills, into the uh, the top of the capsule here. It is, of course, making sure that we can fly using just the, the robotic attachments and stuff like that, the probe cores and such. Because obviously, as I say, Bill, not well known for being a good pilot. And finally, of course, we just need to get a Kerbal of some description up to the space station so that we can attach all the Kerbal attachment struts and stuff like that to make everything nice and solid so that when we're trying to dock, we aren't doing it to something that's wobbling around and changing all the time. Circularization and rendezvous are very well practiced maneuvers now, so I don't think I'm going to go like right into the grisly details of it. Uh, we will jump ahead to dealing with the rocket at the back here. So I was trying to figure out how to get rid of it and uh, it immediately occurred to me that there are a few things that I could do. Uh, the one I went for was actually starting my engines ever so slightly and then de uh, staging and decoupling and then getting this uh, front vehicle out of the way so that this just carries on running its engine the whole way through. I wasn't entirely sure what the outcome of this would be. Uh, in my head, I kind of had some idea that it would end up like pushing its way all the way out of the Kerbin system, and then we'd have a, a bit of solar space debris to worry about. But that's not actually what happened. When I had turned this vehicle uh, by getting rid of the pod that was on the front, with obviously the engine had caught up a little bit, and we kind of pulled it around as we were getting out of the way uh, of its velocity vector, we'd actually managed to push it to a radial position, which meant as it got further around the orbit, it ended up pointing almost exactly towards its retrograde, which worked out wonderfully for me. This meant we were coming down into the atmosphere quite heavy. Uh, the only thing that I was a little bit disappointed uh, by it was the fact that we didn't actually come down on the light side of the planet, uh, which seems to be a bit of a way. Uh, the other thing that was quite nice is the way that the aerodynamic drag made sure it was pointing in reverse the whole time, which was, yeah, I quite liked that. Anyway, here we go, back to the pod. We're going to do a little bit of burning to make sure that our rendezvous happens um, as close as it possibly can. Uh, the destruction of that bit of debris happened to take exactly the right amount of time. I literally had like three minutes to be able to get over there before and, and start trimming my orbit before we ended up just flying past, which, you know, worked out well to me. Uh, so we're going to nullify our speed. We are less than 100 meters away here and uh, it's all rather dark to be honest. Thankfully this was one of the times where I was a little bit more on the ball so I was like wow if we just nullify our speed completely which I'll now take a couple of seconds to do. Uh, it's a little bit frustrating for the for some reason I didn't uh, I failed to put any rear facing RCS thrusters on this so I'm having to do everything in reverse uh, I understand uh, I remember my reasoning why is that we were going to use our rockets to get in close and then all we had to do was slow down and um, kind of direct ourselves left right up and down to make ourselves as close as possible to the uh, desired trajectory but yeah the never really works out as you first imagine it when you're trying to make efficiency savings does it but anyway here we are we're in the sunlight and we're starting to make our rendezvous the only thing that i didn't really think about is how the sun is going to be behind the station when i'm trying to dock which uh was a little bit inconvenient but there was nothing really that we couldn't deal with especially as we can fly almost entirely on our uh, uh instruments here if we keep an eye on the nav ball and of course select the docking port as a target we can discard the uh, front view in favor of using the nav ball. Uh, one thing I did forget is that I actually did include some rear facing RCS. It was just inside that service bay so it wouldn't actually function until the doors were open. Completely forgot about that but there's a little tip for you. If you want RCS thrusters uh, and you put them inside the service bay make sure you open the service bay because that's the only way they're going to have any effect whatsoever. So here we go it's time to get uh, Bill out and do some uh, some pretty serious space construction here. I mean, if it wasn't for this, this whole st whole station could pick up a nasty wobble when uh, we have some vessels docked around the outside, especially if there's conflicting um, conflicting SAS modules. Uh, I've I've 
quite often have situations in this game where there's uh, one SAS module facing one way, one facing another way, and then they'll try and fight each other to become the, the, the dominant force, and it all gets a bit messy and shakes your station apart. We're going to transfer uh, Bill across to the, uh, what, what I'm going to call the command capsule on the top there. He has a, a view around at the whole place, and here we go. First, first major coupling of the space station. So my original plan when putting this uh, whole space station together was to then go on and launch four more of those pods to make up the five-man um, limit for the station. But then I was like, wait, no, this is not what I want to do because that then needs pods up in the on the space station without tourists in there. Uh, and then when I want to launch a tourist, I'm going to have to take a pod away to put one back and all, all these sort of messy... Uh, messy considerations to worry about. So what I've done instead is to take a structural tricoupler, attach a whole load of RCS and three command pods to the, the tri point of that, and then on the single point have ourselves a docking port and a probe body to provide it some power so that we don't actually have to use Kerbals to power this. Uh, we've then just launched it up as it is, and this is going to go on the bottom of the space station to take our Kerbal limit up to the 5 as it stands at the moment, so we don't have to worry about bringing stuff back and sending it up. And also, this will have plenty of uh, sort of manoeuvrability left over, so that if we want to put anything in between this and the station core, we are more than capable of doing so. The highlights of this flight I think are going to be quite limited as this is the third of a well-practiced routine now. So we got ourselves up to a circular orbit. We did ourselves a pretty standard uh, rendezvous. But the one thing that I did do that I did do wrong uh, was decoupling from the rockets uh, whilst I still had quite a lot of relative velocity relative to the target. So we could have done a little bit better there, but all that meant is that I overshot a little bit when I was using my RCS to slow down and then just went back using the RCS, which was, you know, a nice, easy round trip. As I wanted to stick this module on the bottom of the uh, space station here, and I was coming in from a sideways perspective, uh, the standard docking via the instruments would have meant that I would have crashed into the side of the vessel at quite a rate of knots, so that was probably not the way to go about it. So I decided that make, making use of the chase cam would be, or rather I thought making use of the chase cam, but of course they've changed chase cam, so I actually wanted their locked view. Uh, but this let me know exactly where I was relative to the vessel and how I was moving, so that I could push in the, you know, the standard sort of Newtonian physics type way of making my my of making some thrusting motions and a raid in a radial direction from the direction I'm going at so that I end up making a nice little curve rather than the straight line which is what it's all about and as I'm coming in on that trajectory I'm just slowly lifting up my nose more and more till eventually I line up and everything is hunky dory and there's a space station complete guys so there's the, the contract done next time we will be building the SSTO to come up here if if we've got the science if not we're going to be relying on the pods and we're going to try and take on some tourist contracts. This will probably end up in us making some Munula and Minmus bases and orbital stations as well. But until then, I will see you then. Bye!